What's up guys? This is the Rifeman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War Let's Play as the Pirates. So to pick up where we left off, we have pretty much done a significant amount of blitzing through new Spanish territory and our horde of pirates and militia are advancing up towards Antigua. We do have a unit request and I'm going to pick the first light foot to be uh, the Rifleman's Shanty. Pretty sure Buccaneers... Yes, it fits. There you go. Roferman Shanty Bucketeer. Buccaneers. The Bucketeers. Wish I could move them like that. Oh, I would just reinforce them. Well, I didn't mean to do that. Oh well, we're still going to reinforce. We've got plenty of time to get up towards Antigua. It's going to take uh, four turns to get up there. Because uh, Panama doesn't have roads. Doesn't even have basic roads. And neither does Guatemala. Um, but I have been recommended a strategy by Michael Couch. And the idea is, because I don't have access to any naval buildings to research advanced naval technologies, that's not very good for a pirate nation. So obviously there's, there's one option in the Americas which is here in Philadelphia, but that actually exposes us to quite a lot of local uh, local problems, fighting on you know a couple of fronts, and the native factions are then very close by as well, which might not be a good idea. Um, but Britain may be an option. Um, it should be pointed out that now the United Provinces have taken over France. So Europe is has developed into a really fascinating campaign, which unfortunately I can't really take advantage of. Um, but there we go. Um, but I would, it would be very good, I think, to take Britain. I agree with Michael entirely, because it gets me in that naval building. This Britain is in, This region is incredibly valuable, and it is also... Um, fairly defensive or defend defendable from the defensible one or the other from uh, enemy powers but what I think I'd like to do is because it will take some time to build up an army to do that but I want to build up a force here probably in Caracas because it's going to be the best place to build an army is I would like to sail them north Fort Nashrack is tempting but that, that would be a valuable target if I was going to push into Northern America but I want to take um, Plaisance here in Newfoundland then the army wants to hop over to Europe, where I want to secure Reykjavik to try and, try and increase the amount of areas that I can deploy um, pirate fleets. So I could deploy a pirate fleet to start raiding here in the north, and then move on and attack uh, main, the mainland. But that will be a particularly bloody battle, and it will require a significant contribution of troops. So if we're going to start recruiting, we've got 8,900 per turn. Um, I'm going to build this this force up slowly and try and balance my spending on a new army with that of developing my little economy. This force here is replenishing from the previous engagement, but everything else seems to be going okay. We're researching bayonets because getting my getting my militia ring bayonets would be um, pretty significant because it would mean that we don't have to make the choice of putting in plug bayonets and removing our range capability. Square formations are pretty unnecessary. Well, lots of these things are unnecessary for my militia. Um, but there we go. Let's hit enter, because there's nothing else to do at the moment. We just need to keep building up our fleets. I think, to be honest, if I built, built up a mediocre force, we could sail up and take the territory in Newfoundland and then use that territory to start recruiting as well. Because we won't have any real uh, opposition there in the pirate territories I don't think so our fleet got booted out of port without being attacked which is quite significant but this flight can go join Mr Winthrop and you can be joined by this flight as well then this looks like it's almost it is a full strength pirate navy which is raiding and doing good stuff for nine and a half thousand Let's check what we've constructed, a couple of new governor's mansions and some more, um, some expansion on our plantations. I mean, plantations, they, we can't make use of them from a trade perspective, but we can make use of them from an economy perspective. So I'm going to want to upgrade these plantations here, because these territories are by far and away my most valuable regions. That might change once we get Mexico City. Yeah, for right now. Oh, Bogota! Bogota is the most valuable. I think that's because of all the mines. So, 
Getting a steam pump would be great, but I don't have I haven't built a single craft workshop yet, so I can't do that. Bogota Rio de Hacha. Rio de la Hacha is that's the Med Medellin. That's there. Where's the other town? Oh, that's gonna be that port there. Hmm. The next the first port that's going to be built is gonna be built built here in Havana, Puerto Principe, which or Principe Principe. I want to upgrade it to a uh, coaching house because the coaching house for other factions allows them to build some interesting units. I mean, I doubt that's what's going to happen here for the pirates, but I think it's worth trying. Keep on pushing. Let's upgrade the governor's residence here. The one thing that has been pointed out is I could be trying to secure trade rights with minor factions that seek to make peace. Um, so I can't actually, I can't actually uh, make tr peace deals myself, but it's an interesting proposition. So we don't need quite so many shipyards. I'm going to destroy this shipyard. Antigua is my capital, so if we trade, it will go to my capital region. And this is going to be a bit of an experiment. It likely will not play out, uh, but I think it's worth trying. Let's see, you're still researching those trade route raided. Yes, trade route raided. Yes. It looks like we're starting to ease up on the... Actually, let's... Okay, let's take the sloop Herring out from here. And try and get Herring up to Newfoundland. Because I don't want to start raiding ports along the coast, because that means that this trade region... <laughs> these trade lines then become less valuable. Okay, so Newfoundland... A general's bodyguard, a couple of militia, native bowmen, auxiliary. They won't get any any um, actual units to support them. So let's recruit another buccaneer unit. Okay, recruit them on port. Okay, we've sorted these out. The militia, New Andalusia. Let's hit and turn again. All the United Provinces are on the move. They're growing in strength, considering they have... Uh, territories in... Well, they've, well, now they've taken Paris. That's quite big. Um, it has been recommended that I try and put... Okay. Aha! So. Counteroffer. Oh. <laughs> I can't pick anything. <laughs> okay. That answers that question. No, even when they try and speak to you, you have no diplomatic tools whatsoever. So I'm going to clear my offer and ignore any pleas of peace from the 13 colonies. Ah, one of my sloops got caught out. Although we might actually be able to run away. So what happens most of the time is the AI will chase and pursue small fleets like this. Oh my god. Great shout. This is why as pirate nations it behooves us to have more distributed operations around the world. Okay, so we've got new roads in Panama. Continue your advance. Continue your replenishment. Ordnance factory in Caracas. That means we get 12 pounders. And I think it will mean we get... No, oh no, it's the next one up to get howitzers. Royal Observatory. So this will boost the spawning of our own agents to go into the college. So we start to get pirate scholars. A couple of plantation upgrades... And we've also got the roads, which we want to upgrade, because roads are good. Sugar and coffee. Uh, coffee is the more valuable. So let's go for coffee. So I've said it, so I've said it a few times, it's not so much about getting the resources on the world market. Producing goods for trade does count towards... Uh, da -da -da -da, Caracas... Producing goods to trade does produce uh, wealth, which you are then taxed on. So it's still in our interest to upgrade these plantations. It's not quite so useful as other investments, maybe, but it's still a good investment. Yeah, that's not bad, but I think I might just recruit... Okay, these, these units will be more than enough to deal with that force up in Newfoundland. So you continue to push.
Let's keep on keeping on. Got to bear in mind, we don't want to go too far into... We don't really want to expand into Europe with our trade raiding fleets because eventually we are just going to become overpowered by the enemy. We're not going to have that opportunity to build decent strength forces to hold back the enemy. New town emerges. So again, I'm going to buy, build the coaching in. On, I'm going to assume it won't uh, have an impact. But I am interested to try. If not, actually, what else can we build? Okay, it's, a, it's a weavers, which isn't what we wanted necessarily. We'd rather have a um, a industrial building, but nevertheless, that will do. Okay, let's go for the governor's palace to boost our... Uh, trade income, well, our, our tax income, I should say. Get this galleon out to Hi, Mr. Van der Spiegel. Let's get some more galleons for him. Let's get... Well, let's start... First of all, let's rebuild. Use a trade port. Even though we know it's kind of useful, it's still going to produce us some good income. Let's start to build some race-built galleons. To see if we can exploit some more opportunities for raiding trade lines. Yeah, you're on the move. You'll be there next turn. In terms of research, you've gone on to carbines, and the answer to that is no. So you probably want to go for four field crop rotation because we will probably want to go for expanding our towns or incre increasing the rate at which towns are produced. To build up our tax base. Yes, yeah, so I want to push up and take Mexico, hit the Rio Grande, and then that means that the Native American factions will be less inclined to push across the river because we are going to. Nope. We are going to deploy a lot of artillery to defeat their forces. That's why I'm going to want. Howitzers with quicklime because they are the great equalizer kind of. Lots of upgrades. Okay, Nassau's got a governor's palace. That's at max level. Good. The plantations in our Brazilian territories have been upgraded. Okay, let's keep on rolling with the upgrades. Okay, you guys are ready. Let's get a commander. Henry Wall. And then Otto Brander. Let's recruit a Floyd to act as a uh, ship to give us passage up to the north. I mean, it's weird they're not attacking us. I mean, that's a nice little spot to raid there as well, because they could fairly easily dip back into port. Um, but, Mr. Dampy... Oh, Antigua, you will surrender. <laughs> Maintain growth. Build the roads. Antigua's not, not a bad region. 215 extra to growth. So if we take Mr. Dampy and push him out of... Okay, let's just make him attack the next city. I believe they'll actually like us. Yeah, so our garrison forces are only re applying repression 18, so it'll still be plus 9. Yep, that'll be fine. I could ship them up there with my race-built galleon right now. Well, they might not make... No, they won't make it. Don't want to get caught out partway up the world. Okay, so you want to upgrade this farm to get these ports and towns popping. And keep driving up towards Mexico. Because Mexico, as a territory, has a lot of mines. They have a lot of towns. Like I said, ideally, I want to push up to the Rio Grande and fortify the crossing to prevent Native American troops from being able to cross quite so easily because they are particularly dangerous. Especially as we managed to capture this territory without a shot being fired. Advance up towards Mexico... Oh, Mexico. Okay, go for coffee again. Okay, construction's built. Panama, I've got any roads. Okay, let's see if we get... No, we don't get new units. 
Darn, darn, darn. Okay, we don't need... Spies are handy, but we don't need spies. We need money. Wait, what? Oh! Oh, so the reason why... Okay, so because I've now built a trade port, if we go onto the trade screen... There we go. We now have a supply of all of these goods because they are now connected to my home port. But we don't have any... We can't trade them with anyone still. Oh, well. Okay. So I think we're just going to carry on upgrading the plant. Actually, upgrade the gem pit first. Where to, Captain? Ship shape and Keep crystal. gathering up our forces here. So this Floyd, if you pick up the troop, well, you're not going to get in. Get, you're not going to get there in one turn either. Do we dispatch a? To be honest, a sloop went all the way from here up to there. So this sloop, yeah. Hmm. To be honest, this force is sufficiently cheap that we can afford to risk them. Now they won't make it as a group, but let's. We might have to combine them with this force here to allow them to get safe passage up to Newfoundland. And right now, this is going to be when we lose a territory. Oh, we've recruited out. Oh, okay, okay, right. For me, I thought we'd maxed out our galleons. Let's put a flight to garrison the port. You're still advancing. Everything's still okay. Five turns till we get a four field crop rotation. I built. Oh, I might have. Oh, hmm. Maybe I might go for improved grenades to get explosive shells to get great arsenal. I, mean, I, might, I might need to kind of rush down this tree to try and get quick lime shells. Because that's going to be the... Wait a minute. What are you doing here? Well, they're gone now. Or they've hidden in the fog of war. Either way. But yes, so that's the reason why the trade map now looks so radically different. It's because now I have a trade port in my home region where goods can flow in into from my colonies. 13 colonies is... Ha! Hey, you attack our ports and then you try and make peace. It looks like they are sending a forced interceptus. An admirable effort, but foolish, my friend. So what fleet is this? A bunch of faiths, which aren't bad. I mean, you're going to have to face this guy. We can't let him get past us, because if he takes Guatemala and we take Mexico, we just trade. Okay, so rebuild you into a craft workshop. Basic roads in Guatemala. Get cobbled roads. 33 turns for Puerto Barrios. Okay, but here... I don't know why you're deploying your army outside the city when actually we can do this. So let's hold the ground and let's take all of you guys except the brig. Get them back down to here. Because we have a potential enemy to defeat. So let's build... Oh, I can't build any more galleons. Build a galleon and a flight. Because a flight is... Firepower 161, speed 9, hull strength 2800. I mean, they're not, yeah, they're not as fast as these fifth rates, but they're comparable. So my force wants to come down and attack them. Let's take Mr. Wall and attack Plaisance. Let's tr bring this new territory into the pirate fold. And it will give us a territory to the north with which we can raid other colonial holdings. And it also gives us well, it gives us a safe harbour to the north. Which is quite useful to have. Yes, 
So we can deploy my guns to engage from range. Because we do plan on moving up. Actually, are they gonna are they gonna come at us, actually? In which case then. Deploy my militia into the line. Yeah, they are coming at us. Okay, farm, citizenry, militia. Came for the the militia in the center, I suppose. My re the rebels and my general will be looking to try and defeat the enemy general's bodyguard. Let's speed up time a little bit because this could take a little bit of time. Switch to canister shot. Get the guns re-engaging. Get my militia to advance up the flank. To these militiamen. Choosing to engage. There we go, so they're going to engage. Get my pirates up. Get my general onto the right flank because their general's sat at the back. Send my buccaneers into the militia. See how well they do. There we go, we're doing some good damage to the militia and they're actually wavering already. That's quite interesting to see. Back to shaking. So yeah, they're, they're going to start doing some damage back to us. Buccaneers might actually knock out that militia unit solo. Interesting. I'm sure they well, I'm sure they they're definitely more than capable of doing it, but I think I've always been under the assumption that they're not gonna be alone. Well I've always tried to deploy them so they aren't alone. There we go. So the pirates line up ready to face down a new enemy. Oh, this is the new first light foot. Since I've renamed that previous unit. Okay, the militia is shattered. Let's get my general and my pirates down there to attack the remaining buccaneers. These militia have held on quite admirably. Brave, but foolish. my general to try or to get ready to try and chase down the the enemy my pirates can line up and engage the flank of that militia unit with pistol shot I mean no general's bodyguard yeah see they came back see men, men advance Go on, pirates. Draw your sidearms. Discharge their pistols and charge. Pull my general out. Let my buccaneers continue the attack. And my general can push around the flank. Colonial militia unit returned. Get my militia back. To be honest, those guys could come back. I'm not a. <laughs> they definitely could. 
Okay, my pirates might have to just bayonet charge. And my militia, at least now they have bayonets on their weapons. Cease fire the guns. Militia deploy ready to hold them off. If we can knock out the bowman auxiliary, then the battle is over. Well, there they are. Holding their own, but my own buccaneers are, are now in the fight. The militia unit is only 55 militiamen left of the Terre Nueve rebels. Huzzah! Huzzah! The territory to the north has been seized. So then this force is going to build up here and then get ready to advance across into the Atlantic and secure new land in Europe. Let me actually have a town here as well. Good. Good. But you're, so you're getting ready for an upcoming engagement. Yes. Uh, Mosque, uh, Mexico is... They're not building walls. If they were building walls, we're definitely just going to sit here and siege them anyway. Let's hit end turn. So let's see... how the wider world interprets this turn of events. I mean, ultimately, attacking England will probably need, like, two, two full stacks. Aha! They're going after... Another one of my ports. Okay, so the new Spaniards are moving to engage my army. So first of all, we're going to rebuild or re... Yes, you scallywags. I've not forgotten my ships. Let's rebuild or upgrade this territory. We can get some furs and upgrade you to another craft weaver. No, I want... I want a, uh, I want a uh, smiths. Because if I can get a smith, I can build. I can upgrade my mines, which is significant. So my farms have been built. The plantation at Honduras has been built. Okay, lots of good upgrades. Okay, so Mr. Dampy, attack Domingo Terran. He has a significant renown. Much more than my pirate general, but we have significantly more forces to bring to bear. They have native um, infantry, which we need to be careful of because they are melee infantry. And even though we've got our own buccaneers, you know, our buccaneers are not better than their melee infantry. And our militia are not better than their line infantry. So we have to try and be a bit sneakier with how we deploy. So what I want to do is deploy in a deploy a large line of militia to advance deploy three units of militia of pirates sorry behind that militia line and then the fifth are on one flank actually let's take well let's not show actually where's my nah, keep my keep my unit in the center one of these reserve units there he is the rifleman shanty buccaneers James Dampy is going to be in the centre. So I want my militia to advance and overwhelm their line, but I also want buccaneers in reserve to counter charge any enemy units that manage to charge our line. They have a set of guns, but I do not fear that that unit. I do not think that unit of demi cannons is going to be significant. And then run. This unit here did not get an order to advance. So I think I'm going to start stretching some of these units out. Rifleman Shanty Buccaneers take position on the left. You're in the center. These men are going to be very tired. But this is the kind of thing you have to do with militia. Because they are... 
They will never learn fire by ranks. You have to deploy them quite wide to maximize their firepower. So these units, their job is going to be to advance up this hill. With the Rofum and Shanty Buccaneers to the rear. These militia are going to ratchet forward because it looks like they are also beginning to advance. They have some native troops hidden somewhere. So we must be aware of those. Yes, you're beginning to engage. You can engage, but you're going to redeploy. Go very wide. Very wide and surround the enemy. That's the order of the day. You guys have been very bold. Execute that Spanish dog. Oh, he's at the. Oh, he's all the way up here. You men, hold your ground. Uh oh, it's gonna get ugly unless I can bring. Super I could bring all these forces to bear on the flank. Rifleman and Shanty, charge up there to help them out. Throw more buccaneers in. We're not going to worry, need to worry about superiority on the right flank. Someone's routing. That's my my militia already routing. Bring out more buccaneers. So the hope is we can try and surround and destroy the morale of some of their units. So you men charge the colonial line. I think we managed to... It's the this regiment of native warrior auxiliary that we're upsetting. Let's get Mr. Dampy over on the flank to try and provide much needed morale support. Yeah, that regiment of militia didn't really have much of a choice but to try and hold... Okay, let's balance, let's start to adjust our line towards the new threat. So you need to charge into the rear of that line infantry. My buccaneers are going to try and hit this line infantry unit too. Ideally I'd have them over here. Get my general around the rear. Hopefully we can kill their general's unit as well and also run another unit of buccaneers across. Because ideally we are holding them up but we are we're supposedly winning but, but we've got them surrounded. That's the main... Okay let's get this unit to run behind their lines. I don't want them to engage this action particularly. I want to try and get around to the rear of this action here. Although lots of their units are quite poorly. Peaky. Professionally buggered. There we go. That's the way to call it. So I have to get my general involved into this action. Throw more buccaneers into the mix, but it looks like Mr. Dampy has broken their hearts. So now we can focus on a smaller number of units, and this is not without cost. Many of his many of his mateys have been lost. There we go. Surround, fix, and destroy them with buccaneers. And this works. This tactic works against um, line infantry that don't have bayonets. At least for now. Back you go, good sir. You must... <laughs> oh god, the first regiment of foot under 
El Luterio Ramos. Ramos, Ramos. Must bring back the bad news. Our army cannot fully replenish, but they can continue our advance towards Mexico. San Juan, a new port. Good stuff. Okay, so let's bring our... Ah, we're out of range. Let's go get them. Next turn, that is. That's part of the reason why I wanted to emergency recruit. <gasps> Queen Anne's Revenge! Ah, Queen Anne's Revenge! That's the Blackbeard's, Blackbeard's ship. I'm pretty sure. Pretty darn sure. Well, not the Scarlet Ocelot. Okay, so you need to be... You need to get an Admiral, and you'll be in charge of a trade... Of a pirate raiding fleet. Two more turns to get grenades, which aren't... We don't really need grenades, but I want them. I want grenades just so I can continue advancing up the artillery track. Because we are not going to get anywhere with our infantry force. Not a huge amount. We might get some bonuses to morale and things like that. Ah, they're going to flee. Okay. I'll take that as an outcome. I will take that as an outcome. So if I'm going to take Mexico, I would it'd be tempting to take New Spain, but I think, to be honest, if we just leave New Spain be. What those? <gasps> Andrew the First, the King of the Pirates. He's been replaced by Bartholomew I. Good old Bart. Pretty good pirate, to be honest. And he's 21, so he's going to last for ages. So he gains... <laughs> gain in diplomatic relations per turn and prestige per turn. Not that we can... We're not even on the scale. <laughs> well, we're not allowed to be on the scale. San Juan, you can get a trade port. You guys can recruit a, a sloop to go occupy the port. Unit recruited a galleon in the Caribbean Sea. Actually, no, that's unnecessary. You can send the sloop Misery. <laughs> misere, Misery, Misere. One or t'other. There we go. And then now the ah, so you want to go over to Puerto de España. The galleon, the pearl and the ocelot can go here. Queen Anne's Revenge. Let's get Admiral. Michael Booth. Good. Okay. So you're going to be the head of a new raiding fleet or raiding force that's going to go over to towards Iceland. You need another turn of upgrades. Continue. Ah, no! Oh, for God's sake, because this guy's here. Oh, for God's sake. God damn it, Empire. National, new national leader, Bartholomew I. Following a grand ceremony in their capital city. It's not that grand. Okay. So we're running out of things to spend money on, so let's pick a few of the things that we have kind of ignored as lesser priorities for now. One more turn till we get grena grena grenades, then we can ex try and get explosive shells. Or I might have to try and get a physiological technology to allow me to continue to expand my university. Or, so you've got to bear in mind is that there's a couple of schools of thought on this. You can either rush down the more advanced technologies while being unprepared to do it, or you can provide a bit more of a broad view and try and really just focus on technologies that your university is capable of researching. Don't focus on... Don't, don't get too carried away with focusing any particular tree at the expense of the others. Okay, so ignore that for now. Okay, so you're going to be delayed for a t turn or two. Newfoundland's got basic roads. Let's rebuild those. Let's get the army rebuilt. And let's get some scallywags built. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if they take a few turns to get built. We've got time. So you can repair this ship and start to build a couple of floats. Okay, so let's see if we can get the Queen Anne's Revenge up to Newfoundland rapidly. Hello, there's a Quebec ship. It's fifth rate. Handful of fifth rates. Let's bring the pirate fleet to bear. 
Fifth rate hero, Dasher, Raritan, Formidable, Rodney. Rodney? Oh, neat. And a couple of Briggs. So it's a tank of 13 colonies, and the idea will be to probably take them into our service. That would be my, my personal gain. So Galleon's up front. Floyd's to the rear. So we're probably going to lose some ships because I'm rubbish. So there goes the enemy fleet. Yes, fear the Jolly Roger. 13 colonies. I'd like to try and take some of the... Some of, as many of the fifth rates into my service as I can, and my brig, the brigs will probably, hey, they deploy their admiral to the rear, um, probably send their sloops to Davy Jones' locker. Just give them a little bit of an order. Yeah, sixty guns and a galleon, forty-eight guns and a fifth rate, because a galleon is is kind of halfway between a fourth and a fifth. There's no... It's not a perfect analogy, but one thing it definitely is, or normally counts itself as, it is a trade ship that is incredibly difficult to take. So in Darth Mod, any ship can be a trade ship, but in the base game, you have to get galleons, merchantmen, or floats, and obviously Spain gets galleons, and they are much more capable at defending themselves on trade nodes than merchantmen are. Yeah, some of the advanced technologies of 13 colonies beginning to show as they are outranging us. But we have more guns per side. If you try and turn north, then we can focus. Well, we can more, more re resound, more soundly defeat you. Okay, there we go. So they're beginning their turn. Nah, focus on round shot. Just keep attacking. Ah, they're not going to turn into us. They're just going to sit here and be bombarded. Let everyone fire at will for now. You, you've already fired. Let's continue to try and harass them. We're not going to be sailing at full speed into the wind, but it does mean we can still bring more guns to bear at any one time than the enemy can, especially in a bit of a stern chase match. Ranger's got a full broadside to fire. Terracotta's firing into the rear of the f of Dasher. I don't like how little damage we're doing. That is not a good outcome. Let's bring a section of our ships off and try and hit the other side of Dasher. Now oh, I've buggered this up. Good and proper. Oh well. So you're continuing to make progress. To be honest, actually, you guys can just hold where you are and engage. You can continue to push, both of you, all three of you actually continue to push, at speed, terracotta, load your broadside. Something like that will kind of mostly do. Obviously that means this galleon here wants to fire, I want to load broadside left. Ready. Fire. Now. 
Oh, you are going to get attacked, Dasher. Fire your guns earlier, or else I'll miss. Fire your volley. Board Dasher! You load broadside right. You load broadside right as well. Curses. There's more agile fifths and making they're making fools of us. Give them orders to just attack various ships. Oh yes, you're going to canister shot. Well you're gonna canister shot that little sloopy boy. You're gonna canister shot fifth rate. Ah oh, you ah, you cowardly cads. You were us, you were the chosen one. Dash is surrounded, bring these two in at speed. You're gonna fire broadside left and then reload. You fire. Cause you would just had a bit of okay, try and broad that ship there. You chase down the brig. All of these ships that are coming in, load them. <laughs> oh, they got they got surrounded by fifths. I mean, to be honest, if one of these suckers goes up, Raritan is going to be in big trouble. To be honest, you need to cease fire to allow your pirates to put out that fire. You're going to pivot, switch to chain shot, so you can try and dismast Rodney. You've also given up the ghost. We might have taken out one of her masts. So let's buy the broadside. Load your broadside left. Oh, with chain shot as well. You beauty. You load round shot, you load chain shot. Try and put a shot into her masts. Do what you can, good sir. You're going to fire your broadside early into Rodney. They have fifth rates. The other side. Try and get some of these ships, some of these ships about. Try and save some of me pilot pirate hearties. So you guys fire broadside into Rodney. Broadside left is gonna fire chain shot. You guys fire round shot. Actually, you guys are okay. You guys just make full sail towards the back of the map. Actually, let's get you pivoting. Go 
because Hero is their Admiral. So Rodney's wavering. Last your guns that were on the, that currently had shot in them. Neptune is routing. There we go, some of our ships there towards the rear. The floats are moving in to engage. We get to fire off a broadside into formidable. Okay, so Rodney is lost a mainmast. You just keep hammering shells into formidable. So you guys are going to keep firing chain shot. Because you've got a head on shot into formidable. Try and do some damage to her masts. I think they trying to withdraw. Let's try and get Aguilia, Aguilia up front. Let's try and get this galleon. Okay, you guys know. Nail it. I don't board, give them orders to advance towards. Formidable is surrendered. So now we're on to a chasing engagement against the remaining Scallies. Looks like Raritan is raring to go. <laughs> All right, hard port. Everyone else. Okay, let them fire as she bears. Chain shot into her masts. Exciting opportunities here. Her main mast is going to go down. She is dismasted. Okay, let's speed up time, because right now we've got a couple of ships. I mean, Raritan, good on him for fighting, but... Ooh. I suppose, technically speaking, they haven't actually lost their Admiral. But everyone's currently failing to sail at full mast. Gia is actually battling with Raritan. Uh, just pivot this scallywag. Let's put a broadside into the ship. She's back from. She was routing again, now she's wavering. Surrendered. So now it's all of you versus Mosquito, the brig. to go through some of these guys and individually order them to full mast because some of these ships are pretty fast especially my own floats but yeah I'll bring you guys back when something's actually up so see you in a second everyone radio and we're back in the sloop the brig Mosquito looks particularly upset, especially as more and more of our ships come into range, although they might, take, might need a bit of manoeuvring to get off some plucky shots. So just that good broadside into brig, into the, br the brig. There we go, the fleet has been destroyed. So those fifth rates 
are going to be brought into his pirate majesty's service. Fifth rate, fifth rate. Not the brig. Not the not the brigs. Our matey. We're not going to go after this force yet. We're going to hold on to, try and hold on to these ships and escort them safely into Puerto de España. Our own fleet will have to join, will probably make for Barbados, but we want to get our prizes into the safety of a new harbour first. Because five fifth rates is quite the boost. How's that impact our income? Uh, 10,800, nearly 11, 11 grand. Let's upgrade the Weaver's Cottage. Good. Eight turns on explosive shells. At that point, this whole debate I said about, you know, should I shoot up like this or should I try and be a bit more equal? Now I've got a couple of Weaver's Cottages. I should probably get spinning, Jenny, to get a bonus to town wealth from textile industry buildings. That would be a good decision. I'm kind of counting on a territory like Mexico spawning um, at least... So we've got two towns. We've got Villa Hermosa and... Villa, Her yeah, Villa Hermosa and Monterey, which we can grow to try and get another university built. But to be honest, lots of our territories do just really like us. So let's hit end turn. Yeah, there's lots of our territories really like us, so we could probably upgrade a school in lots of them. Really. For being for being smart here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Nope. No, Hanover. This is another little Moogle ship. But I'm pretty darn sure it's not a ship we actually want. It's a fifth rate. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay. Let's take our most damaged ships. Make for Barbados. Our fifth rates make for Puerto de España. Let's also spend a bit of time upgrading some of these buildings here. Then Abraham van der Spiegel. Actually, to be honest, I think there's a fifth rate, one fifth rate in there that's not that bad. Hero, the Admiral's flagship. But to be honest, we don't need more. We don't need any more than that to capture that ship there. So let's not build the Governor's Palace. Maintain the push. Are you going to intercept us? Nope. So just give them a move order to just attack New Mexico next turn, come what may. Um, and we're probably going to fight this action just to make sure that we capture this fifth rate ship intact without losing any of our ships itself. But looking at the timer, I believe it's time to end the episode. So thanks for watching guys, hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you next time for a fairly routine but useful battle from a pirate perspective. Cheers everyone.